Okay, here we are for Portimao, a track that I don't really like uh, in the last game. In this game, it's somewhat better uh, with the ground effect cars. It feels a bit more planted, I don't know. There's a bit more feeling in the car at the very least. Uh, but the problem is, uh, as usual, uh, it's just something in the track, the way it, the track is or what, I don't like it. But anyway, uh, saying that, not necessarily a bad thing uh, to have a challenging track to, to, to drive here. And uh, the lap that you just saw, it was slightly modified from the, the best lap time that I did uh, just a few laps before. And uh, this one particularly that I did uh, is with lower pressures. And uh, it's always a thing in time trial versus uh, a real condition in Grand Prix or online or even in career mode. Uh, more so, it's time trial versus GP or online. Uh, in time trial, you can always run higher pressures and it will be much faster that way. Even in a real racing condition under uh, in GP mode or online mode, you can run higher tire pressures. You will find lap time, but the problem is overheating is an issue and that's basically going to lose you all the lap time that you might have gained probably throughout the first two or three, uh, two or three thirds of the track. Uh, two thirds of the track and then the last sector or so maybe you know you might lose it again it's always back and forth now uh let me just show you that that's exactly the same setup like the world record setup except for the tire pressures uh so yeah uh let me show you what the world record setup is real quick um and that is actually what i'm running so i found that to be well, for once, actually, the world record setup, the time trial setup is quite decent uh, for a track like this. And uh, reason being so is, you know, uh, you don't always get that kind of uh, uh, feeling for most other tracks. You normally want to run like high wings or low wings compared to the time trial setup in certain tracks. Here, I feel it's just nice. 26, 24 wings. It's what everyone is running. Um, you can run lower. If you need a, just a little bit more top speed, I'd say just drop the rear wing by 2 and uh, keep the front wing as it is, maybe on 26, maybe you can drop it down to 24. Uh, generally, if you drop the rear wing, you also want to drop the front wing so that the car remains balanced. Sometimes, what happens if, if you drop one click of wing, you may have to drop down two clicks of front wing just to stabilize the car because the rear produces a lot more downforce. Uh, but at the cost of extra drag uh, the front wing also produces a lot of downforce but you know it ju doesn't generate that much drag uh, compared to the rear so sometimes if you let's say you know feeling adventurous with the setup you want to drop down let's say four clicks of wing on the rear and then on the front you drop down four but the car just doesn't feel the same in terms of balance you can drop the front wing one more and you can maybe feel the car is somewhat having the same feeling that you did before either way 26 24 it's somewhat high medium downforce uh, for this track because there's a lot of corners that you want to be taking it almost flat or you know having good traction out of the corners it's so much more important to get good entry into the corner and good exit as a million lines you can take through a lot of these corners and especially when you're battling side by side and all that you want to make sure you're not going to spin that easily okay so you can always use this for the rain, you can actually go plus 5, I'll say that will be more than enough. And if it's full wet race, um, you know, maybe plus 7 will be enough. Any higher than that, normally, uh, unless you're confident of running that much higher downforce in the wets, then go for it. Otherwise, stick to what is safer. Um, that gives you a bit of chance of overtaking as well. And uh, in qualifying, you can always go down one click lower or go one click higher depending on how you feel. A rear wing as well, you know, if it's parked for me off, you know, feel free if you want a more top speed or more down, more stability in qualifying, you can always increase your rear wing. Otherwise, keep it as it is and you're good to go. Adjustments, oh, oh, differential, excuse me. Uh, differential for on throttle at 55 which is pretty much the standard that you'll be running almost every track i have tried going lower like 51 2 and 3 or whatever everything in between uh 54 is okay but uh 51 and 2 like i used to try in most tracks it doesn't work out here 
because uh, these corners they change the balance of the car really quickly uh, from understeer to oversteer for oversteer to understeer well not exactly from understeer to oversteer it's more common and uh, you know having a bit of on throttle make sure that uh, when you're going on throttle uh, it provides it a bit of understeer on exit so that your car doesn't the rear of your car doesn't you know snap that easily uh, saying that you can always try higher like 60 you know or anything in between uh, the higher you go it de definitely creates more understeer more forward momentum uh, in the car and that can also cause um, understeer or oversteer depending on uh, which corner you are either way 55 is pretty safe to run in this track in all conditions off throttle at 50 just because i want a lot more rotation in the car and uh, not necessarily a bad thing if you want to try higher go 51 or 52 in the race condition it will be okay uh, but yeah if you just want the rear to turn around more you feel like the car is very sluggish just go down to 50 it will be fine suspension geometry always right right left left what that means is minimum camber minimum toe this is the fastest way ish you know uh, generally the fastest way in the game you can find some improvements in lap time if you go a bit, a bit of toe on the front um, 0.6 0 0.7 maybe that's uh, you know when you want to experiment with it you can find time with that rear toe if you increase it it sort of gives you more stability on the rear um, but uh, it also adds a lot of understeer mid corner maybe it will be useful if you are struggling in this track like me you may want to try increasing the rear toe instead of adding more downforce adding rear toe will make sure the rear doesn't slide too much under acceleration so you know maybe with that you can still run the same amount of wings but get more traction out of it or you can run lower wings and get the same traction with a bit more stable rear end uh, but otherwise you know if you look at the default setup all the default setups uh, all five presets they run something like this which is well stable in a way a uh, it doesn't snap in the middle of the corner on power and all that unless you have too much uh, throttle input for sure uh, this is pretty stable but it also generates a lot more drag on the straights run this same setup and try it out with this uh, silly uh, suspension geometry setup you will lose easily about half a tenth to one tenth uh, on the straights alone so you're giving away free lap time here essentially you don't want to be doing that if you're looking for a lot more lap time out of your car now suspension this is a surprise um, because you know when i first loaded up the time trial setup i was like surely not this is not a time trial setup but you know after loading it a million times from you know multiple top drivers and it's it's this it's the same and uh, after trying out funny things the usual that you know i normally run like lower suspension and roll bars something like this in most tracks it doesn't work here for some reason um, maybe for a good reason actually because there's a lot of undulation here up and down and then you know side by side like a little coaster <clears throat> lando and that causes the car to be very unstable when you're changing direction going on power going on the brakes and uh, having it stiff and not generally a stiff setup like this you know uh, stiff runs and soft rear is the best way to go for stability of course level one level one will be the most stable keep it at 10 doesn't matter if you find yourself having a bit of entry understeer maybe you can try nine or eight uh, if you have a lot of like uh, mid corner understeer maybe you can try going lower uh, but at the same time if you feel like you need more say stability on power you know when you go on power you want more the car to not spin out uh, you can always increase your front entry roll bar it'll be more stable similarly for front suspension if you find your corner entries are too pointy maybe you know you can always go up or drop down the front wing right height rear is at four i will recommend it as well don't go three it doesn't feel good uh, four five it's also okay around here uh, if you have a bit of high speed understeer mid corner understeer uh, increasing your right height by one click on the rear definitely helps and you don't lose any straight line speed if uh, it's barely even noticeable if you gain about three tenths in the corners by doing this 
uh, you know, and you lose a few thousands on the straight, that's not gonna matter at all. Front right height, you can, if it started off at three in the default setup, I say, uh, but you know, going high as well, what the world record setup is running at seven. I find it pretty nice. I've tried six, I've tried eight. I think six and seven is the sweet spot for me. So I'll go with seven just because it's safer to run this in a race condition. I'll always prefer to run the safer option in the race uh, considering how punishing this game is on acceleration and uh, on you know power as well. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep the car a bit more safe. Seven, four, seven, five, either way works. 100% brake pressure. 50% brake bias, no changes in this. Maybe 51, uh, you can try in some corners where you feel the car might just step out. Uh, especially uh, the last braking zone at the end of sector 2, uh, before the loopy section, you know. Uh, it's an uphill braking zone, so you can try 51 so that the rear of your car doesn't lock up. And also into turn 8, you can try 51 if you really need to. Otherwise, keep it at 50 all the way because if it's a downhill braking, you want as low possible brake bias because the front uh, gets more load, it gets more understeery. Uh, tire pressures, uh, like, like I showed you just at the start a few minutes ago. Um, minimum pressures for all the front tires and in the race, you should be running close to minimum. You can start with minimum rear pressures, uh, but keep in mind that you know when you're running lower pressures, it's generally a bit more unstable not necessarily bad uh, it gives you less stability compared to higher tire pressures <clears throat> you want maybe two clicks three clicks at most that will be just fine if you can cope with the tire temperatures as long as they're not exceeding like 96 97 98 they're fine you want to keep it as low as possible like in the 92s 93s around there is just nice just a good balance to your car and uh, if you have like a bit of instability in the mid corner or in high speed corners you can always go back to your transmission and add a bit of off throttle that will solve the problem one click just nice or you can go and stiffen up your suspension uh, maybe increase your right height uh, increase the front right height maybe even more uh, you can try all those things to stabilize your car okay and yeah uh, time trial of course go for the maximum pressure because it is so much faster even in the lab, um, you know, in the lab just now you saw, um, I'm pretty sure my inputs were just about the same, but somehow I lost a tenth on that last sector, last corner alone. Whatever, might be skill issue, might just be lack of confidence uh, in this track, in this car. Um, I don't know, but yeah, higher tire pressures, not necessarily the way you want to be using in the race condition. In time trial, yes. In the race, start with minimum and then go maybe one two clicks higher on the rear just nice so there you go 26 24 on the wings you can go one click higher or lower in qualifying depending on what you need need more downforce go higher you need less downforce go lower a uh, in the rain plus five wings in the inters uh, maybe if it's full wet you can go plus seven plus eight wings uh, but if it's going to be a mixed condition race inters to dries I'd say you know just maybe keep it like this or just go one click higher or two clicks higher that's enough you don't want to go too high otherwise you'll be vulnerable in the dries if it's dries to wets and uh, that is definitely a good move if you want to go higher down first right off the bat especially if it's confirmed like you can see in the race you know it's going to start off dry and then the rest of the race is going to be wets go for a wet setup definitely okay uh, yeah that's about it in uh 26 24 yeah transmission 55 you can keep it at 50 on the rears uh, off throttle maybe uh, right right left left geometry suspension 10 1 10 1 keep it stiff keep it stable 7 4 or 7 5 right height either way will work brake pressure as always 150 and start with minimum pressures for all tires um, maybe go up one or two clicks on the rear if you need it yeah have fun um i don't know what track to do next maybe uh there's not many left uh usa maybe mexico um monaco is left uh, i don't want to do that but uh probably do that like at the end let's see a bit more 
and yeah check out the other videos and other setups any questions you can leave it in the comments uh, join the discord if you want to you know just keep up with things that i don't really update um it's not much going on these days it's almost the end of the game's life cycle and we have life as well outside of the games so yeah see you around take care bye bye